Thank you everyone for being here. And first of all, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the team of the Transportation Committee, Jen Di Giovanni, Elio Lim, Emily Ronnie, Rick Arbello, Shima Oberoche, John Basel, and my staff, especially those who work here from the 250 Broadway, uh, Evelyn uh, Collado and Tomas Carita. So thank you for the great job that you do. And like also to thank the staff of the speaker uh, and all the colleagues that are here today for coming together in this important day where we voting on this bill. Annie Danis Rodriguez, the chair of the Committee of Transportation. First, let me acknowledge my colleagues who are here today with us. Uh, Councilmember Dodge, Cool, Rose, Reynoso, Richard, Levin, Levine, and Espinal. Uh, in recent years, the city has seen an increase in bike ridership. Unfortunately, we have also seen an increase in cyclists and pedestrian fatality. Uh, I have work. I would like to say that I'm proud, but you know, more than being proud, we've been trying to do the best as we can to uh, leave our contribution together with the colleague here and the administration to make the streets safer. Uh, we have worked alongside with my colleague, Speaker Johnson, on a number of bills that have increased protections for all cyclists and pedestrians. Since being elected and appointed chair of the Transportation Committee, I have made, made it a top priority to ensure we, ha we keep pedestrians and cyclists safe throughout the redesigning street, building protected bike lanes, and working on congestion, congestion pricing. Speaker Johnson, it has been a fair, first ally in that goal, and we will continue to work together to ensure that we put New Yorkers safe, safety first. One thing that everyone should know is that the city of New York has only 1.4 million New Yorkers that own vehicles. And many of them own vehicles, those who live in Queens and other places in the South Bronx, because they had to walk 10, 15 blocks from their house or where they live to a train station. Therefore, we need to plan together uh, to think to having the, those more than 7 million New Yorkers who rely on buses, trains, a ferry, and bicycle to be the priority. Today we will be voting on proposed intro 57-A, a Speaker Johnson Street's master plan bill a, instead of the current approach that the city takes on to transportation planning. This bill will require DOT to issue and implement a master plan to our city's streets every five years. This will allow New Yorkers to see how the park fit into the whole, for example, how a bike lane in Queens is integrated in creating an interconnected bike lane network, or how a bus lane in the Bronx, especially in the South Bronx, that has many area of transportation deserts, is vital in giving people access to job centers, not just in their area, but citywide. The bill also lays out certain benchmarks for the first two five years plans. DOT will be required to install 250 miles of truly protected bike lanes over five years, an increase of 50 miles per year. It, as you know, I've been calling for 100 protected bike lane every year but yes, getting on 50 is a good uh, move. 150 miles of physically or camera protected bus lanes over five years, transit signal priority a thousand or, in, or intersections, is something that I know that also my colleague here, Mike Levine, has been pushing for. Bus stop upgrade at 500 stops per year, 400 intersection redesigning per year, a million square feet of pedestrian space over two years, accessibility pedestrian signals and pedestrian ramps, a thousand of new intersections, and much more. This bill represents an ambitious and fundamental, fundamentally different approach to our city's street, prioritizing people over cars. And of course, I always say I'm one of those 1.4 million who own a vehicle, but we need to make our city 
a city that should do an open planning around making our streets more fr- uh, pedestrians and bicycle friendly. The street belongs to everyone, and those who use it the most are our pedestrians and cyclists. We need to put safety over parking. If we are going to take to the zero in Vision Zero seriously, while at the same time addressing the climate crisis and keeping New York's economy and liability competitive with other globally leading cities, this is the approach we need to take. I now call for a vote on proposed intro 1557-A. I recommend a yes vote and I ask the committee clerk to please call the roll. De nuevo, estamos aquí votando un proyecto de ley que lo que hace es hacer un plan master para nosotros asegurarnos que en los próximos años la ciudad de Nueva York invierta los billones de dólares necesarios para que las calles sean seguras, para que los ciclistas, peatones, entiendan de que todo aquello que andamos manejando los vehículos lo miramos a ellos como prioridad. Hoy es un día histórico donde nosotros estamos tomando un liderazgo a nivel de la nación que esperamos que siga siendo un ejemplo en otras ciudades y que esta voz no solamente se sienta con acciones específicamente con dinero en la ciudad, en el Estado, pero que también desde el gobierno federal nosotros podamos seguir empujando apoyo financiero para que este plan sirva de modelo a nivel de la nación completa. With that, pase su descanso. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote, Committee on Transportation, Chair Rodriguez. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Deutsch. Uh, permission to explain my vote. So um, uh, I'm proud to say that um, I'm not part of the 1.4 million um, um, people in the city of New York who own vehicles anymore. I, I gave up my vehicle uh, several months ago. And I'm a proud uh, transit rider. Um, I reduced my driving time on the roads by more than 50%. And uh, it's not always that easy, rain, sleet, Anything else, you know, all types of inclement weather, it's not always that easy, but um, we get the job done. And um, my message to, to those who own vehicles and those that who must own vehicles, at least try to get off your vehicle and out of your cars at least once a week, if not once a month. This way we could reduce congestion on the streets. And uh, if you have 1.4 million New Yorkers who own vehicles, imagine how many uh, vehicles we could take off the street if people just take that little uh, bit of um, time off from their cars and using mass transit. Um, so um, I'm, I'm looking at 1557, and uh, my district in particular is a district that people rely on the vehicles. So up until now, DOT has been implementing um, different changes in my district, and I just want to say for the record that one size does not fit all. Um, DOT has implemented dedicated bus lanes and bike lanes that in my district, and I must say they have been a, a disaster. Um, when you look at certain areas where they uh, put in bus lanes and pedestrian islands, it forced vehicles to now uh, reroute um, and reroute from a specific location I'll give is Nostrand Avenue, where they implemented a bus lane in Kings Highway. And because of the heavy congestion in that area, um, those vehicles are now driving a few blocks away to Bedford Avenue, and on Bedford Avenue, you have an unprotected bike lane. Um, so, and I happen to live on that bike lane. So when we look at changes, uh, we need to look at each district independently and listen to the concerns of the elected officials, um, because we did have cert- some bike lanes that was installed most recently, and some of them are shared bike lanes with vehicles. And that just increases uh, accidents, it increases crashes. And uh, we need to work together very closely when it comes to making changes in certain districts. Uh, In addition to that, uh, I believe that commercial loaning uh, zones should be set at at certain hours for all uh, businesses. So this way we know that those trucks um, make deliveries during the morning hours and we should learn from other states um, how they implement it, and we should bring that to the city, opposed to having trucks loading and unloading throughout the day. And when we do uh, put out truck loading and and unloading zones, we need enforcement. We need to make sure that those signs are clearly um, noted that these are dedicated 
spots for trucks loading and unloading. Uh, many uh, signs can be confusing here in the city of New York, like on Kings Highway in my district. You have three different signs on one pole, and one of those three um, directs you to a loading and unloading, which is kind of confusing for motorists, and they end up parking there. So um, with that being said, um, I think that uh, changes need to, be, need to be done, and I'm looking forward to working um, with this master plan and uh, we should all work together with elected officials, the Department of Transportation, and the City Council. And remember that one size does not fit, fit all. And with that, I will be voting aye on 1557. Thank you. Menchaca. Aye. Espinel. Uh, before I vote aye, I want to just commend my colleague, Heim Deutsch, on making that switch and taking the train to City Hall. Uh, we should all chip in and buy him a bike now, get him on the, on the bicycle. Yeah, yeah, I think that will be amazing in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but with that said, I, I vote aye. Thank you. Cool. Aye. Levin. I vote aye. Levine. Vote aye. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just want to say uh, there's just there's one bill, the five-year plan bill. Uh, that concerns me. Uh, not because I don't think it's a good bill, it's because I don't think it goes far enough. I think that um, pushing it back to 2021 after we're all gone and allowing for the next council and the next mayor to do this work just doesn't, you know, I don't, I don't feel like it's coincidence um, and would have loved for it to be more aggressive. Uh, but I'm, I won't stop progress. I think it's a, it's a good bill nonetheless. I think we could have done more uh, and I'm going to be voting aye on all. Richards. I won't be chipping in. I got scholarship money. I got to save it for my sons, but I vote aye. Rose. Permission to explain yes. my vote? Um, I say ditto to um, Councilmember Deutsch's remarks. I, I really would like each district to be looked at with a critical eye and plans nuanced based on that district and that district's needs. Um, I happen to live in a district that... Uh, is um, marked by transportation deserts and so I I would like for that to be taken into account when um, we're we're looking at uh, what this plan should look like and I also believe that planning is necessary I think part of the problems we encounter is because we don't plan um, and so being that planning is necessary and essential, I vote aye and ask to be added to this um, legislation. My vote will be 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Item has been adopted by the committee. Thank you, and with that, this hearing is adjourned.